Howdy folks, Jason from the Surf Hermits here with a drum rig rundown. All right, here we are with a drum rig rundown with my old warhorse Yamaha Recording Custom. The heartbeat behind the Surf Hermits. Also, I play with a band called Garuda, which is a pretty cool combo with sitar as the lead instrument, electric bass, drums. So this is a Yamaha Recording Custom in the uh, cherry wood finish, I think they called it. Um, made famous by such notables as Dave Weckl, etc. back in the 80s and 90s. This is a fairly old kit. I bought it new in 1991. Bought it on payments from Long and McQuaid in Victoria, BC, Canada. And yeah, I think it was like 5,000 bucks or something like that, which seemed like a lot. Um, sort of back over there in the corner, you can see there's a 12 inch Tom that used to go there. But I've always been into this four piece scene. So basically, uh, snare drum is a pearl free floating brass shell drum. That brass shell actually sits inside and only touches the heads basically, and then sits on kind of a cushion on that aluminum thing. It's a great sounding snare. That's probably 90% of all Surf Hermit's tracks. Um, the other one I use a lot is this one, which is a Yamaha Maple Custom Snare Drum. Again, bought probably mid-90s. Um, David Garibaldi from Tower of Power came and did a clinic in the city that I lived in, and that's the snare drum that he played. And in fact, actually, this kit got used for clinics sometimes in Victoria. The music store would actually call me and and uh, want to rent the kit for various people. Dom Famulero and some other sort of classic drum guys played it. Um, yeah, cymbals, largely Zildjian's. That's a uh, Steve Gadd custom session ride, which is a cool little cymbal. Uh, very ride-like, but you can still sort of crash it if you want. Not that I do, but I guess I always have the option. A couple of generic-ish crashes, thin crashes. Uh, I cracked my Zildjian China symbol. You can see it over in the corner of Doom over there. So budget-wise, I went Sabian. Zildjian KZ hats. It's a K top and a very thick Z bottom. Bought those in 1989. I've had those symbols ever since. I keep wanting to buy new hi-hats, but I haven't, because I'm cheap. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Pedal is a pearl as well. I recently got that. It's pretty cool. There's different cams you can put on it, so you have uh, different leverages on the pedal. Super fun. Uh, this has been a great kit. It's a real warhorse. It's been on tour since 91, basically, and in studios since then. Um, yeah, it's it's served me well. It's it's not super versatile. It'll only tune kind of in one place, right above where the heads are wrinkly, and that's where it sounds good uh, for itself. I, I used to have a Tama kit, which I could tune higher, which I kind of almost like the sound of better, but but I've grown into this one, so it's it's been awesome. Um, miking wise, it's kind of a collection of things. What's not on the snare? Let me walk over here because I use it for other stuff too, is a Sennheiser E609, or an E906, sorry, E906. The difference being the switchable bass roll off. That's a fantastic mic. It actually changed my drum sound quite a lot once I switched off of a SM57 for that. It's a lot more open and real sounding somehow. Uh, on the toms, 421. Uh, And I have another 421 or a 521, whichever one is the switchable one. I have one of each, which I used to use. But when I had a, when I had another band in and doing a session, they had more toms than I had regular mics for. And I have a spare bass drum mic. And I used that on the floor tom for that session. And it was like, holy, that sounds amazing. So I, I used that bass drum mic on this floor tom. 
It's a small kit. It's a 20 inch kick, 10 inch high tom, 14 inch quote unquote floor tom, even though it's not sitting on the floor, it's hanging off the stand. Um, but I like it tuned nice and low. So yeah, that bass drum mic's good. Uh, overheads are just Rode NT5s, nothing too fancy, just an XY position. Um, over the years I do different things. I'll, I'll run them over top of the kit, sort of separated stereo wise. Lately this XY has been working well. And then what I'll do is I use these AKG C1000s just on the hat and the ride and then I can I can pan those. I'll have a little more control over the panning of, of those particular elements of the sound. So yeah, not much to say. Uh, that's a Beta 52 on the floor tron, by the way. And in the bass drum, there's a Beta 52 as well. Sort of poked in the hole and pointed at the where the beater hits. And it's been a pretty workable drum sound for me. It's a bit idiosyncratic, I guess. It's it's sort of, it's a funny kid in a way. Like other people play it and it sounds not great sometimes. Um, it's just, it works for the way I play, whatever that is. And uh, live, it's a great sounding kit too. So I've been pretty happy with it. You know, as everyone does, I fantasize about buying some other kit, you know, just to try something different. But it's a lot of cash and this thing works pretty awesome. So anyway, that is the Drum Rig Rundown. Jason from the Surf Hermits. See you later.